Hi, everybody. Welcome to Am I the Asshole Podcast. This is the call-in show episode. So I'll soon be joined by Sarah and a lovely roster of callers in. And yes, that is the right term. It's the same as passers-by. Okay, callers in. Thank you. Now, we do have, in fact, one heck of an app for you today. But I just wanted to throw a little reminder here to please, please, please rate, review, and subscribe. We really appreciate that. Go in, give us a little rating on the iTunes, you know, tell people. It's, it helps us grow the pod. It's really important. And if you want more AITA pod in your life and you want to be on the call-in show, you can get on our Patreon. It's a lot of fun. We now do weekly bonus apps, and I talk all about my personal life, and I'm even getting Sarah to really kind of say some stuff on there. It's getting pretty juicy. Patreon.com slash AITA pod. We'd love to see you there. Have a happy holiday. Holidays, and welcome to the Colin Show. We're joined by Tamara. Tamara, welcome back to the Colin Show. It's Tamara's second appearance on the Colin Show. You love to hear it, people. Tamara, how are you today? Hello, I am fantastic. I'm so excited to be here for my second pod with you both. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you. Now, last time you were our um, person who is child free but doesn't identify as child free, which we love. Sarah, do we love? Yes, of course. Anyone who makes something a part of their personality is probably annoying about it. Yes, when they go too far into it. Yes, but like it's okay. It's okay to be a thing. But when that thing is your whole personality, then it's annoying. This is true. And I agree. Right. Like as a great tweeter. Just kidding. Okay, we're doing a little vegan stitch. And so Tamara, your sort of expertise here is that you were a pescatarian for how long did you say? I was a pescatarian dash vegetarian for just over 10 years. Oh my God, that's actually, that's a great run. But now you're back in it. Now you're in. Steak again. I'm going to get hate mail, I'm sure, or you guys will on my behalf. Um, Yes, <laughs> I now eat all the meats. I was going to say, what made you decide to go back? Okay, everyone says it would be bacon, right? This is always what people say. It was turkey, guys. It was actually turkey on Thanksgiving. Mm. I had Ooh. gone. Oh, I totally get that. Turkey with gravy on Thanksgiving. Are you even joking? It, it was It was awful. I had not had issues for the longest time. Um, I was able to get meat substitutes and learn how to cook so that I didn't really miss meat and the meat flavors. But for some reason, Thanksgiving one year, that turkey, it was calling to me in a way that it had never been calling to me before. And I did not eat it, but I waited a few months and I really was craving meat. And I just kind of figured my body was telling me it was time because if I was craving it all the time, it was probably bad. And I found myself sneaking it out of the kitchen one day, hoping that no one would see me. And I realized <laughs> I'm trying to sneak bites of meat, which is a totally normal thing for most people to eat. Then maybe, maybe you should just make this official. So I'm back in the meat ah. world. I think of all the animals to eat, you know, and I believe this is technically a myth. They say that turkeys are so dumb that when it rains that they will look up at the sky and their mouth will be agape and they will actually drown. What? I have heard um, that. I it's would a myth, like to obviously. think it's Yeah. They are dumb enough though. I will tell you that when I was in high school, I was a cross country runner and we would run by turkey farms. And you would fake the sound of a dog barking at him. And it's the <laughs> best thing in the world because the entire, I don't know what a group of turkeys is called. It's not a flock. It's something crazy, I'm sure. They all get That's together. A dinner, and like, a dinner yes. And they Tat. flee. And we would just torture these poor turkeys. And we would pretend we were dogs running. They're hilarious birds. They are very dumb. Yeah, that that is exactly what my thought was. I was like, clearly that's a myth, but clearly, you know, every myth is a little bit true. It's based off of something. That's hilarious. I've never heard that thing before about the drowning. And now I'm kind of sad that I couldn't spread it to more people thinking it was well, true. Well, spread it. Spread misinformation. <laughs> you know, I want, that's now I think that's the new Twitter status symbol. Forget the blue check mark. I want the blue exclamation mark of this, this information. <laughs> is not, of getting fact checked. Yeah. I'm that's so funny. Checked. All right, guys, we're going to be covering AITA for not telling a vegan mom that the candy she stole from my kids and was eating wasn't vegan. Oh, boy. This happened on Halloween and the day following. Wow, Halloween and post-Halloween. My neighbor, 38F, (laughs) super vegan. I love it. Super vegan. She fights other vegans. I don't know. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, she, she gets really mad at people who aren't vegan enough. There we go. 
She has two kids. I, 26F, also have two kids. Now, my apartment complex didn't do traditional trick-or-treating on Halloween. In fact, residents were advised to set out pre-packaged individual candy bags, good lord, on their patios, front door areas if they wanted to participate. But the traditional knock-on-door hand strangers candy was not permitted. Talk about a talk about a stringent HOA, people. Give me a It break. is a pandemic. Oh, you're right. I, I, I <laughs> Small forgot. details. My mom, like, did the same thing. ITA, ITA. So Halloween comes and the kids are all dressed up and each building has a scheduled time where the kids go door to door. I ended up having to work late, so my neighbor offered to walk my kids around with hers at her building scheduled time. About 45 minutes later, my kids came home with a small bucket of candy, six little goodie bags each from individual apartments that participated. Everything was fine and my kids didn't say anything weird had happened. They were just excited to eat candy once they got home. The next day, I took my kids to the park directly across from our apartment complex. My neighbor was there with her kids as well. The kids were playing and she took out one of those individual goodie bags with candy in it from her purse and started to loudly rummage in it. She ate several pieces of candy and my daughter eventually noticed, ran up and asked if she could have a piece and my neighbor responded, nope, this is my tax candy. Remember that this was my reward for taking you trick-or-treating last night. I was a little weirded out by that statement and asked what she meant. She said that she is the one who had to take the kids out. She took five bags from each of my kids as a tax. Five? Her son, what is she, the, what is she, a blue state? Her son uh. then chimes in and said, you only took two bags from us. She responded with, but I'm your mom. I was doing OP a favor. What? So they get a higher candy tax. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was thinking about how to respond when I noticed that she was holding a Starburst candy and decided to just smile and nod and go back to watching my kids. I let her continue to finish off the bag of candy and then said, hey, aren't you vegan? You know, a lot of those candies are made with animal products, right? I explained what gelatin was and how a lot of those candies are made with gelatin. She's horrified, Googles it, and then told her kids that they're leaving. She said something about how she's going to be sick and stormed off. Now she's giving me dirty looks every time we see her and we'll let her kids play if she shows up at the park and we're there. My husband thinks I'm the asshole because I should have either not said anything about the gelatin or said something right away when I noticed. I don't think it's my job to tell a vegan what is and isn't vegan, and she deserved it for stealing candy from little kids. A-I-T-A. Okay, honestly, my parents have, they do this, the mom tax, the dad tax, and at first I was like, eh, that's fair, but I thought you were going to say one bag of candy, but why is this woman hoarding candy? She took 50% of their reserves, guys. 50% yeah, each. Like, what? That's, That's so insane. much. She doesn't need that much. That's completely insane. 50%. Completely. What is that? I mean, that that really is. That's a $400,000 a year tax rate. And this is candy. <laughs> so what are like, you doing? She doesn't even need one bag of candy from each kid. She could. Her tax should be one bag of candy. And that would honestly be appropriate. Her tax should be... She buys the effing groceries. Can we swear in your podcast? She buys the damn groceries... And can buy herself candy. And she should ask her kids <laughs> if she can have some of their candy. Like, I think this is ridiculous. Yeah, like, why does she have, like, 14 bags of candy? What's going on? And it's like, why wouldn't she... Like, this is like... It's almost like she did it behind the parents' back. It's like, if you view it as such a thing where you need to be compensated, then maybe don't do it. I mean, this doesn't seem like a kind of favor where you need money or something. Like, it's you know? so yeah. petty. It's so petty because she is doing them a favor, but... You know, that's what a favor is. You do it without expectation of something in return. It, it, I don't know. It just feels like maybe she took advantage of the kids almost in a way. Absolutely. Chelsea V says NTA. She said research her own dietary restrictions. And honestly, who doesn't know that gelatin is an animal product? I think even yeah. fish know that gelatin is an animal product for the love of everyone knows uh, that. Yeah. I feel like when I got to that part, I got like a little bit of fake story vibes. Um, this part was a little bit weird because... I knew that gelatin was a thing back when I was growing up as a kid because it was such yeah. a weird... I mean, if you think about it, who figured that out? That's really strange. Those ingredients Why did, yeah, why did we talk about it? Because, well, because it was in Jell-O. I remember that. Right. It's the same thing. So gelatin's the same. It's in marshmallows. Well, I've known and this gelatin, forever because we couldn't have marshmallows on Passover because the gelatin is not kosher for Passover or something uh, like that. Oh, so it all the so Jewish people have an issue with gelatin. I uh, I think that was the reasoning. We had to buy special marshmallows for Passover, and I think it was because of the gelatin. But also, my sister's been a vegetarian since seventh grade, so I've known about gelatin being an animal product since then. Like you don't Wait, have to do trip- more than like a two second Google search to see that so much stuff that you would think is vegan is not. Like anything with the red food color in it is made from 
a ex, like a, this extract from a bug. So it's not vegan. Oh, so any sort of red really? food dye in general is not vegan. A lot of wine isn't vegan. A lot of grain isn't even vegan, depending on how it's collected and how people define it. It's just ridiculous that this woman would not know this. You think that bug right. is like kind of honored, you know? He's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I am a bug, but I don't know if you know. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> the most beautiful You're... of bugs as they're squished yeah. and put in my food. credits. Hawaiian punch. Ever heard of it? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what Whisper a byline. Writes, YTA for not speaking up for your kids. NTA for not monitoring her diet. So did did OP not not speak up? I guess she didn't really attack her for the tax. But I guess what is that would be petty to attack her back. I, I don't know. I would think it would be weird to say something about it because then you do look petty because the neighbor was the one to take the kids out. I think it would right. be for me one of those situations where I would take, you know, a mental note and basically just avoid that woman and never have her do it yeah. again. I think if anything, I'd be like, why the hell did you take five bags of candy for my kids? And just be like, like, what's wrong with you? Right. So she was maybe kind of going at the gelatin because she didn't want to go exactly toward the meat. She got snarky because it was the only way she could get back at her, I think. Which is maybe why the right. husband was saying she was the asshole because maybe anytime you do something out of spite, it's probably not a good reason. But it's very satisfying sometimes at the moment. I mean, um, come on. It doesn't get more satisfying than that. I don't see how the neighbor would be mad. I mean, she pointed out that it had gelatin in it, but how does that make her the asshole? Unless maybe the neighbor's not actually a vegan and she just made her look bad and, like, caught her in her plot. That's a long stretch. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I guess think, she well, could she have... has a bruised ego. She has a bruised ego, right? Because it's like, here she is kind of sanctimoniously extracting candy as taxes, and then... She's kind of like probably guilty on some level about it. She knows it's wrong. And then here she is also violating her ethical veganism. The woman's charge was that she didn't tell her the second she noticed, but she told her not. It's, it's not, not like she waited the next day to be like, oh, how are you feeling? By the way, like that would be a blatant right. asshole move. And it's also like it's it's not it's mass produced candy. We're not talking about you went to a restaurant and it's their particular preparation of, you know, iced water isn't vegan. Iced or water. <laughs> like, peanut yeah, butter yeah, like, particular restaurant is, you know, superior. Oh, that sounds what what about peanut butter and bacon? That just it adds, could happen. That, it that's could a happen. thing, right? Mm. That's a, I, I gotta try that. I've heard good things. I haven't had it. Have you ever heard bad things about anything in bacon? Let's be fair. You're right. Okay. Everyone is so obsessed with bacon on line that's a valid point. I, I like it but like it's so salty that like i don't really like i don't know i just i don't savor it as much because it's just it's an assault of salt thank you I'm i love poet. salt but i would yes. draw the line at like a bacon covered starburst though that might be a bit much for Ooh. me eh, I, I don't know that's that's intriguing me you know what i actually have a bacon story this is uh this is um with my ex from colorado we went out to this fancy steakhouse one time you know steaks are like 80 bucks really expensive steaks so we uh noticed that they have bacon on the menu market price right and whenever you see market price what do you guys think expensive if you have to ask you can't afford it that's what market yeah. price exactly. is, oh right? yeah so we order the bacon and it comes out and it's a freaking like beautiful slab of bacon. Like, I don't know, maybe half an inch thick. It was gorgeous. And we just ate it. We cut it up and we thought it was amazing. Right. Market price. We had no idea how much it's going to cost. So then we get the Italian dessert, which is like that um, kind of like a ball of chocolate around ice cream. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? There's a word for this thing. Tartufo. Tartufo. Yes. That's the one, Sarah. Fucking you win the podcast. It. You win the podcast. Great. I wanted that word so bad. We get the tartufo. I go, hey, you know what would match this chocolate shell? Bacon. We order a second bacon. At this point, we're like, brace for impact, brace for impact. Okay. <laughs> so the the bill comes and we get to see the price of the bacon. Keep in mind the steaks were like, I don't know, 60 to 140 dollars. I think I think we spent like maybe 140 dollars on both of our steaks. What do you guys think? The bacon costs well now i don't know 30 bucks a side 30 bucks a side sarah what are you in for um 12 five dollars for each of the bacons what okay a rare rare market price okay that was low that's Changed like my life. grocery store Into market it. price <laughs> right so reasonable anyway top reddit comment brad the cat writes nta jelly tin is like the first thing you figure out isn't vegan anyways and i say this as someone who did try veganism take zero effort to google take zero effort not to be a dick to kids <laughs> there is well, that <laughs> True. i guess it depends how much trauma you have um 
usually when people are a dick, it might take them some effort, but I'm not trying to defend OP. Um, is there any other points? I, I think this one's kind of cut and dry. I, I really can't come for OP at all because, you know, what did they do? Inform someone that something wasn't vegan. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, this lady is acting so out of pocket that I'm just kind of like... Danny, I think you used the, the right word. The word sanctimonious sticks out Ooh. to me for sure. Um, Absolutely. As we yeah. said earlier. Like, Very, like, retaliatory for no reason. And I, and I would agree that there is, you know, a lack. I wish... I mean, I see, you know, classic internalized unassertiveness and her not calling her out for the candy tax, but like, it's also kind of the thing. It's like, do you really want to have a conflict with this person in front of your kids? Like there's a, there's a level of uh, discretion is a better part of valor to her not calling that out. So I don't, I, I wouldn't really fault her for that. I think it's a good thing to be aware of that she did that, but I just wouldn't expect any favors from this woman in the future. And I would not trust her either to not have ulterior motives. If she were to, I guess that's nice the me. thing. Yeah, because it's like, all right, I, I'm wondering why OP like even really cares because this lady is so obviously overreacting, but she also doesn't sound like someone you'd want to keep in your life anyway. So who really cares if you were the asshole? Yeah, I agree. I think I think it's super cut and dry. I think we all agree. AITA for not telling a vegan mom that the candy she stole from my kids was eat and was eating wasn't vegan. I think we all agree. A big fat NTA and this crazy tax candy taxing mother. Is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 All right, Tamara. Well, it was great to have you, and I'm sure we'll have you back again sometime soon. Sounds awesome. Thanks, guys. It was fun. We welcome Dominga to the call in show. Dominga, thank you so much for joining us. You're you're from uh, Chile. Yes. We're so excited to have you because I mean, this is the perfect situation for you. I can't I can't even believe you found this, Sarah. This Hi. is this. I did my magic. I searched she, Chile and am I the asshole on Reddit? She <laughs> killed it. And now, Dominga, you also told us you are uh, kind of prepping here to be an economist. You're a master's in economist. Yes. Econo economics. Economics. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, what, what? And you said you want to do academic econ. I yes. don't know. It's so abstract. I don't know what to say. I mean, what, what do you got to say about the economy? In this economy? What do you got to <laughs> say about it? I mean, I kind of stick to numbers and like models I don't really like the real world so I'm like uh, I'm not so <laughs> useful <laughs> economist maybe for like every day but um hopefully I'll come up with something that people can apply but data is it's not my thing so you don't like to do useful economics well you sound perfect for academia huh? <laughs> I know right well, it's great to have you, and uh, we're super excited. I, I really can't believe the situation is so perfectly matched. I can't believe you found a situation with Chile in it. Here we go. AITA for wanting my boyfriend's mother to not speak in Spanish in front of me. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years, but his mother and I sometimes have trouble getting along. She speaks English very well because she's lived in the States for the past 10 years. She's originally from Chile, imagine that, Ooh. and speaks Spanish as her mother tongue. That's kind of funny, mother tongue, because she's a mother. Anyways, <laughs> oh up to hey, I had fun with it. Up till now, she's <laughs> she's enough. always tried her best not to speak in Spanish in front of me whenever I was around, which is unnatural for her since she exclusively speaks in Spanish with her son. She must have gotten mad at me for something again, because the last time I was at their place, she completely ignored me and spoke to her son only in Spanish. The same thing happened yesterday. Her behavior makes me feel like she's not acknowledging my presence and she's doing it out of spite because she usually gets mad at me and I would have no idea. For example, she admitted to my boyfriend that she consciously ignored me on my birthday because I forgot to wish her a flight. Uh, sorry, I forgot <laughs> to wish her a good flight one time. Oy. That is so crazy. Oh my God. A good flight? What? That's not this, a thing. Happen <laughs> this happens relatively often, and I'm wondering if this is just one of her petty behaviors. On the other hand, maybe she just doesn't have the patience anymore to translate the stuff she has to say to her son because she's getting old and going through menopause and has rheumatoid arthritis, which she tends to blame a lot of her behaviors on. Maybe I'm being too sensitive and I should just brush it off. My boyfriend brought the issue up with her already and she denies doing it completely, so I don't know how to solve this small problem. A-I-T-A. -A. The surprise fights are like... <laughs> yeah. It's getting me. Like, at first I was like, oh, P, you're kind of being an asshole if you, if you don't know why this woman's mad at you, but not if she won't tell you. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Right. I just feel like every time I'm with someone that speaks um, English and there's another Spanish person with like me, like you try and make the effort to speak in English so the other person doesn't like feel uncomfortable. And whenever like the you can tell when people is like that like, they feel kind of ignored and left out of the conversation. So I don't know. I just feel like it's if she's been living for 10 years, it, it comes naturally like 100%. So I don't know. I just, I think it's like more of a petty thing than anything. You know, what's really weighing on me is this allegations that she was mad at him for not, uh, sorry, mad at her, mad at the girlfriend for not wishing her a good flight. I mean, Truly. what is that? That's not a thing. That's really not. A, and it's not like a Chilean thing. Like, that's just not a thing at all. It's so, a cheap excuse. There's no good flight in Chile. They don't say, have a good flight. No, that's really not a thing. Well, I'm so happy we have a fact check on that. Because right? that would have been my first right? assumption. I know everyone in Chile, have a good flight. You have a good flight. I'm not flight. I mean, the next one you take, let that one be good. Um, I mean, I think it is rude. I think she knows it's rude. I mean, I guess. 10 years is long, but like in her slight defense on this note, I definitely had like my uh, my grandfather lived in the United States for, I don't know, 150 years or something. And his Spanish was horrible, you know, or sorry, his English. His his English Spanish, was I was like, hard. what? His Spanish I mean, was great. I, I've been living here for 20, you know, 29 years. My Spanish sucks. <laughs> he, his English was terrible. I mean, and I think like there is a fluidity and like a, an ease that can come that doesn't necessarily come with time, especially if you don't like consistently work. it. I mean, I don't know because I only speak one language and I don't even speak it well, so. Yeah, yeah, I do think like in her own home, I can understand why she would want to speak her native language. But it but it is rude to do that when there is someone who doesn't speak any Spanish. <laughs> and did she actually um, tell his um, her boyfriend once that she didn't like it and then she continued to do it? Or am I just making that up? Uh, it's kind of implied. My boyfriend brought the issue up with her already. So he had brought it up once before. She denies doing it. And then she also mentions the last time I was at their place, she completely ignored me and spoke to her son only in Spanish. The same thing happened yesterday. So this is like a strike too. Yeah. It does seem like an easy mistake to make, if nothing else. But like it's it's definitely like not considerate. But is it inconsiderate? Is it rude? I well, really I mean, I mean now is. that we know that she might be doing it as like a punishment. That yeah. adds right. another layer. The thing that she doesn't like admit it, it's what gets me. Like, no, I'm, I'm not yeah. doing that. Like, I mean, it's pretty like black and white. Like, either you are speaking in Spanish or you're not. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, that, and that's where I'm getting confused on OP because OP says her behavior makes me feel like she's not acknowledging my presence. Which, you know, you could acknowledge someone's presence in the wrong language. You make eye contact, you wave. Yeah. So that doesn't require, it kind of sounds like she just flat out isn't like even looking at OP. Yeah, absolutely. I've been in situations with international students where I don't speak their language or they don't speak my language. And everybody's, uh, I mean, everyone's always very careful because they know it sucks when people speak a language that you have no idea about. And everybody's a little bit self-conscious. And, and like, I always wonder, like, are, are they talking about me? <laughs> what are they saying about <laughs> me? <laughs> so I don't know. It's like common courtesy, I th I guess. With everyone I've been, like every single person has always been very considerate and they're not like even close to me. Like they're just random people and they still care. So I like if it's um, her son's girlfriend, like you would think that she would make an effort at least. I don't know. Like that just seems like a lazy excuse. Like just admit that you don't like her. I don't know. <laughs> there does seem to be some kind of issue there because like, oh, you're purposely ignoring her on her birthday because she didn't wish you a good flight. And you're not <laughs> even telling her you're mad to give her a chance to apologize. You just want to hate. Yeah. yeah. Um, Miss me with that haterade, mom. Go ahead. <laughs> and there's also this thing that when you start speaking, I mean, at least for me, I'm with the friends that I've talked to. Once you start like speaking in English, like your brain switches like to English mode. So it's not like you're mm -hmm. translating every word. You're just like in that head space. So it just seems like uh, like a kind of lazy excuse to say like, oh no, I'm speaking Spanish now. It's like, it's I, I swear to God, it's not that big of a deal, especially if she's been living there for 
10 years and she speaks fluent English because I think that's um, OP said that at the beginning of the post. Yeah. That she was, yeah. So I'm not buying it. Like, and what's that thing with like menopause and uh, like. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, weird too. Every yeah. excuse in the bucket here. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, what, menopause? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, oh, I can't like, speak English because of my hot flashes. I don't know. I don't know. If yeah. I, don't, like, I think English, I, I think, sorry, the language issue is what OP is kind of describing this as, but it really seems more like an attention issue, you know? Yeah. Because if she really is so exhausted translating everything to English, it's like, I get that. I, I can understand, you know, especially, you know, we're kind of assuming she's fluent, but we don't really know. But, you know, OP even uses the word translate the stuff, which which tells me, Domingo, that this maybe isn't a case of she can kind of just slip into that English headspace, yeah. but rather that she's speaking English how I speak Spanish, which is like, I just say, um, you know, caballo every fourth word. And the third <laughs> one's like, that makes no sense. You're just, you're saying horse. And I'm like, okay, well, don't, don't be rude. Like, that's what I got. <laughs> that's what I got for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. To be fair, that could be the case. Anarchy 8 writes, you're not the asshole. I'm bilingual. My parents are bilingual. My husband speaks only English when we visit my parents and they want to to talk about my husband nothing bad was ever said they just wanted to talk about him <laughs> or they wanted just me to answer they would speak in our native tongue which excluded him completely and was utterly rude i translated everything they said so he could understand every time i told my parents they were being rude every time it didn't stop their behavior but it did reiterate to everyone that i was firmly on my husband's side and their attempts to triangulate were going to fail every time wow mm, that's a, i like her impressive, mm. but very I much effective <laughs> It's very rude. It's very rude to be left out. And, and you know, this doesn't really necessarily extend to language. This, this extends even to just topics, you know? Like, if you're with a family, like, when I used to hang out with um, my ex's family, they would go on these really long conversations about, like, you know, their kind of social circle and stuff. And I was like, I got nothing to say here. You're, like, just, you're not including me in the conversation at all. And you're talking about someone for 40 minutes or, like, whatever, these people, you know, for and it's like, okay, I guess I'll just sit here and listen to you talk about who you hung out with in high school. <laughs> yeah. Dark Clark writes, you admit that it's unnatural for her. She's probably been doing it for way longer than two years that you've been in a relationship. You aren't dating her. You're dating her son. So expecting significant behavior changes from her is unreasonable. Talking to her about it would be okay, but you also just have to accept your significant other's family as they are. Well, I would agree if there wasn't like something deeper going on here, I feel like. Which I think there is, because like saying, oh, you didn't wish me a good flight. It's like you, you just clearly have a problem with her and you're coming up with like petty excuses. So mm -hmm. and, and the thing about th that Danny said, like the ignoring part is what got me. Because, yeah, you can make an effort if, even if you're speaking in Spanish, like you can try and make the other person a part of the conversation and look at her and like have I may maybe her son translate a couple of things to her. But like the ignoring part to me, there's a deeper issue than just being like tired of speaking in English. I don't know. Yeah, agree. Because the. the the speaking Spanish seems kind of like a convenient cover yeah. right, to yeah. the ignoring. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is this is a story that's wrought with convenient covers. It's first it's the good flight, then it's the menopause. I mean, <laughs> you know, next up, oh my horse is sick. So what? <laughs> of course say always. You. Melancholy Pop says you're both the asshole. You mildly so far you're not exerting your will. But if you did, you would become the massive a-hole. She's the a-hole if her language choice is intentional petty punishment. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I really maintain this isn't really about the language. It seems that's just the way this, like, lack of attention and lack of consideration is manifesting. Because I don't think OP just feels, like, acknowledged, you know? It's At not all, even really yeah. about... Yeah. I guess I will say, though, I think that if OP, like, does go with that line of reasoning and, like, says like, tries to forbid her from speaking Spanish in front of her. Like, I think she will come off the asshole if she tries to go that route. Yeah, I think that's a yeah. very bad move. You don't want to be... Well, you don't ever really want to demand a super specific course of action like that. Yeah, like, and I then, think you're just going right. to look like the asshole. Yeah, I think OP should just say, like, look, I, I really don't feel acknowledged by your mom. And I don't like this comment, oh, well, you just have to deal with the family the way they are. Because it's like, the reality is that they have to deal with you, too. And I don't like when people get, oh, well, that's just the way it is. It's like, well, no, your family needs to accept them for who they are. And they can accept your family for who they are. But there's a meeting in the middle 
that needs to happen. And if there is no meat in the middle, this could be a real deal breaker. I mean, depending on the mother's involvement in this in this guy's life, it can really matter a lot. Yeah. Like, I don't think the mother would be the asshole for wanting to speak Spanish. I think the asshole part is like ignoring her and not acknowledging that she's there and like not making any effort and like finding excuses. So... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think we're going to have to kind of play with the title a little bit because if I say AITA for wanting my boyfriend's mother to not speak Spanish in front of me, I would say YTA, but I think we kind of agree that the situation is a little more complex than that. And it's really AITA for wanting my boyfriend's mother to acknowledge me. <laughs> yeah. And I think we do all agree that the answer is not the asshole and the mother is. Yeah, if it were to guess the verdict, I would go YTA because it's like, okay, if she doesn't yeah. want to speak <laughs> Spanish, yeah. like, or whatever. But I mean, clearly, I don't think she's the asshole at all. OP, I mean. So we agree, not the asshole, and the mother is. Well, Dominga, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to meet you. Please fix the economy for so many Americans. <laughs> Please. <laughs> thank you for having me. We welcome Ellie back to the call-in show. Ellie, thank you so much for joining us. You're in Canada. How are you today? Good. Thank you for having me. How are you guys doing? We are doing well. Always a pleasure. Yes, you know, we really, really can't complain. Now, Ellie, you were telling telling us the Toronto sitch. We're at lockdown number two over there in Toronto. You hate to hear it. Yeah, everything's uh, shut down again. I think back to kind of how it was in spring. Um, hopefully that like gets everything back down so that by the new year we can chill again. I mean, it's winter anyways. So like really, where are you going to go? Yeah, right. And and now and I don't mean to, you know, traffic and stereotypes <laughs> here, but Canada, it's fucking cold, huh? Oh, it's very cold. I mean, in fairness, it's actually been pretty mild, which I think is the least 2020 right? could do for us, that we're getting a pretty <laughs> mild give us, winter. Give us a number. What are we talking about? How cold does it get in the in the Ronto? Ooh, um, well, I, we do Celsius. Uh, I feel like we go like negative. God, honestly, I'm so bad because as soon as I know that it's like... Here, I'll convert it. As soon I'll as I know it it's live. lower than like... Um, zero I just don't go outside but I feel like we get um I'm trying to think I feel like we get into like the lower teens when it's really really cold maybe even All like right. lower 20s but honestly negative it could be colder C. than that negative 15 c and f five Eey. degrees Eey. oh my god that's too cold New York very rarely goes yeah. below 10 degrees right Sarah I would say very I feel like there was one week maybe. last year where it was like 14 degrees and that was just a really bad week but it was only a week Usually, I think we hover in like the 20s you know, or the 30s. And I, I don't mean to throw this at you, Ellie. I, I know it's not your <laughs> call here, but, you know, people always say, oh, the metric system is better. And it is. The metric system is better for measuring. I agree. The kilometers and the meters. That said, Celsius, I think, is a mistake. <laughs> I, I don't agree with Celsius. And, I, and I've thought a lot about why this is. And, and here's what it is. In Fahrenheit, the sort of livable temperatures where humans hang out in, okay, is all between roughly 0 and 120, which is nice and intuitive, right? Because things kind of start at 0 and then at 100 pretty much, right? Celsius is this batshit insanity where 100 is boiling. Guess what? If anything is ever 100, you're dead. So that's never happened. It's only relevant when you're cooking. Insanity. I say Fahrenheit makes more sense. We put 212, it's way up there. You're not going to touch it. You get it. It's not <laughs> necessary. And then all the temperatures live in a nice narrow narrow zone. With Celsius, there's all these wasted numbers, like 70 Celsius. What the fuck is 70 Celsius? I think that's, that's like never too coming hot. up. Yeah, I feel like once you hit past like 40, you're just like, stay inside. It's, you don't even touch it. Um, I don't know. I feel like I like the... I like the um, metric system because we just I know it's like we start at zero and then that like gives you a good like you work within like 30 or so I mean if it goes past 30 you're basically again it's like really hot and then if you go into negatives that just means don't go outside because <laughs> negatives then you're below 32 or so it feels like I we have know. more nuance I, I just, I, I'm, in our system I think we have more nuance let me have <laughs> one Ellie we blew it with the, fe oh, the that's feet fair. and the inches is stupid is stupid pounds are stupid yes. I give you all that let us have Fahrenheit I think it's our one <laughs> Well, there you have That's it. fair. Because, I mean, 9 degrees Celsius in spring is very different than 9 degrees Celsius in fall. Like, currently, I think we had, like, 9 degrees the other day, and I was like, I can go outside without a jacket. But, like, in the spring, you're just like, oh, my God, summer's coming. What even is, what's 9 degrees in Fahrenheit, Danny? 
Oh yeah. About 50. See, that's wild to me. It's a small that's number. That's wild. Nine? You go, oh, it's nine out. <laughs> it's nine out. What does that mean? What does that mean? And I know, Ellie, you're like, I've been using it my whole life and it's perfectly intuitive to me. I get it. Anyway, that's my Celsius hot take. Um, AITA for go. insisting Fahrenheit is better. Hot take, to it's a pun. An, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. AITA for refusing to forgive my parents over something they lied about over 10 years ago. Oh, boy. When I was a young girl, I used to spend a lot of time with my nan. She had a big collection of jewelry that I would beg to see. So each time I came over, we would sit down at her vanity and she would show me each piece. There was one bracelet that stood out. It was gold with red stones. And I believe that my nan had to be a magical queen because a bracelet like that would obviously contain powers. She died when I was eight years old. My mother brought back her jewelry box, and I pleaded to keep that bracelet. Neither parent thought it would be worth more than its weight because a lot of her jewelry was just cheap accessories, so they let me keep it. Fast forward a couple of years. My mom and dad went to a wedding of my mom's cousins where her aunt gave her a photo book with old family pics of my nan as a girl with her family. And one of the pics is my great nana when she was... 20 in her 20s wearing that bracelet which spiked their interest so they went and got it looked at turns out it was pricey they never told me the amount they sat me down when they got back and said because it was worth so much it was too risky for me to wear and promised when i was an adult i can have it back i got one last look at it and it was gone obviously i was very sad but i never forgot I asked when I was 18 and they told me to wait until I'm 21. I asked them last week and they finally made it. They sold it the same week I last saw it, but they said the money went on our trip to Disney World. That bracelet is one of the only memories I have with Nan and it's gone. I don't want to forgive them. Would that make me the asshole? Oh, oh my God. That's so sad. Those parents are monsters. That's mm, I push back bad. on that. I, I mean, I feel like it's one thing to, like, sell it, but it's, like, another thing to lie about it, and then when she's 18, to be like, oh, wait a couple more years. To like, lie for, like, 13 they years. They kept lying about it. Like, did they just think she'd forget yes. about it? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree that the lie at 18 definitely were crossing into a a less forgivable zone where it's like, that's that's an adult you're lying to. Yeah, and it's also like you're just like you're giving her a time too, where you're like, okay, come back in two years when you like you know that bracelet's not there, right? You know immediately, right? You know immediately. Yeah, I mean, there's really no way I'm not gonna fault them for lying to their 18 year olds, uh, and they, according to OP here, they didn't say sorry. Um, but I want to talk about the original crime. I think that's kind of more the more interesting thing here. You know, I see a, a family that and I'm, I'm reading this a certain way, but I, I think it's a fair analysis that is not maybe necessarily balling out. You know, I'm buying mom's logic here. She's saying the money went to our trip on Disney World. So clearly at the time they thought, look, she's a little girl. She'll forget about this freaking thing. We want to take the family on a vacay. It's going to be meaningful to them now. I get that impulse. And I understand maybe if she was, well, it was over 10 years ago, she would have been 11. It's a, it's a dirty impulse. It's a bad impulse, but it's tempting. I understand how they could fall into it. At that age, you can explain to them what's happening. Like maybe that's, maybe that's like a bit naive of me to think that like you can explain that to an 11 year old and they'll understand it. But like, I feel like the lying is way worse. Like if you're going to do it anyways, then I feel like you should be like, Hey, listen, this thing is actually a lot more valuable than we thought it was. You know, we have X, Y, Z expenses. Like this could actually help us. Or even like, I mean, even pitching it as like the Disneyland trip. I'm sure she was excited about that. It just feels weird to like take it and like lie about it when like clearly this means a lot to her. I agree. I mean, what I've gleaned and I, I do, you know, I'll offer Sarah's typical disclaimer here. Oh, we yeah. are not parents. When we've done, for instance, uh, situations about gay people and explaining gay people to kids, you know, people always kind of say like, yeah, just, you know, say what it is. They don't care. <laughs> you know, like it's not going to be as whatever you're, whatever you think is going to happen. It's honestly going to be met with like oh okay and i i think you're right i think you're right i think that people will do this right they want to resist the confrontation they want to avoid the confrontation because they that's going to be a little bit of immediate pain they're procrastinating it's so dumb conflict, i mean i think right? that op would have cared i think she would have cared she would have been upset like she wants she likes the bracelet yes. she would have been upset but to put that off for 13 years 
It's nuts. Yeah, especially because, like, if you deal with it in the moment, you can always give her another piece of, like, the fake, like, you know, the costume jewelry, because apparently, like, the fun thing was putting on all this jewelry, so you give her something else of the grandma's, and then it has a sentimental value, even if it doesn't have this, like, monetary value, which obviously the kid didn't even know or right. care about. But you're just like, we're going to take this memory from you, and we'll give it back to you later. Like, it's just for safekeep. Like, I mean, even if they'd done that and lost it, I'd under, I'd be a little bit more understanding, but they just, they took it with the intention to sell yeah, it. Yeah, they knew immediately. That, that like, is so dirty to me. It's like, all right, say bye to the bracelet for 10 years, knowing full well they're going to turn around and go to the pawn shop, like, right after that. Mickey D says, NTA, if they had to sell it to feed you or keep a roof over your head, I'd be more forgiving, but a trip to Disney. And even if you had good memories of that trip, they're tainted now because they lied and thought you'd forget the bracelet. Yep. NTA. see going kind of to the, uh, titular question here, which is she's refusing to forgive or OP is, ref- yeah, she is refusing to forgive. It does get a little hairy, but how can she forgive? Yeah. I don't hear, or she didn't write here any acknowledgement of wrongdoing. Any I'm sorry. So it doesn't really seem like I, I don't actually think that forgive is the right word. I think the right word is forgets completely. Mm-hmm. How can you forgive someone who hasn't apologized? I don't, you know, let go, perhaps. Does that ring yeah. you guys? No, that makes sense. I also think you cannot forgive them over this specific instance, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're about to go like no contact. Yeah, because, I mean, you can't forgive them for something they're not apologizing yeah. for. Right. I mean, I mean you can. did you say this is something to go no contact over or not? I something? don't know. It's something to look at, right? Because if you can't, if she can't say like, hey, listen, I want you guys to take ownership over this. This was wrong. You made a boop here. Oh, boop. And they go, we didn't make a boop. This was, we didn't do nothing wrong. And that this is the way we're going. That would be more of a ground for like, oh, y'all toxic then. All right. Amy L, ESH, they shouldn't have lied. You shouldn't throw away your relationship with parents over a thing. If this is part of a series of lies to you, maybe that's different, though. I'm definitely going to push back there. You don't you don't owe your parents nothing. That's that's um, what I believe. Yeah, I mean, that. It, this sort of goes back to what I was saying, where just because OP isn't forgiving them doesn't necessarily mean that she's never speaking to her parents again. It's kind of a really big question mark of like what these supposed consequences might be. Yeah, that's true. Like we don't know that she's going no contact. Plus also it's like this whole thing of like, you don't want to throw your relationship away over, you know, this thing. But I'm like, if the parents are refusing to apologize and they know that this is where she's lead, like if she was to go no contact because they haven't apologized and they still refuse to. Yeah, like like, they deceived you for 10 years. They're throwing (laughs) it away. Yes, exactly. I'm so happy you said that, Ellie. They're throwing it away. Refusing to apologize or even own a mistake that hurt someone's feelings, even if it's not a mistake, even if it's just something that happened that hurt their feelings, that is throwing away and making a move to throw away the relationship. Yeah, because we, I feel like there's so many situations in the group where it's like, oh, like people are saying, I'm throwing away this relationship over this silly thing, but it's like the other person is being like toxic or not compromising and like, or like other the other person's situation has set this like weird um, ultimatum. Yeah. And then people will be like, oh, well, you don't want to like throw this away over or you don't want to ruin this relationship over something so silly. But it's like the other person who set that up to begin with. Absolutely. Sarah M said, if they hadn't told you it would be yours when you were tiny, you wouldn't have spent your entire life looking forward to wearing it. Lying is lazy parenting. Yeah. They should have explained their situation and helped you understand, too. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't think this was a crime of laziness. I think it is. I, I see it it's as like far more. It's like conflict averse slash lazy, like you're putting off for 10 years, what you don't want to do today. I don't think conflict aversion is made of laziness at all. I think it's made of, uh, of fear. I think it's a lot more toxic than mere laziness. That's fair. I feel like laziness can play into it though. Cause like, it's like laziness to sit through like everything that comes after, like, you know, the conflict resolution and like teaching them how to deal with whatever is going to happen. I guess maybe if I could play with, we talk a lot about emotional labor, emotional laziness. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there. having to explain exactly why, like, you know, this thing matter, this thing is very expensive and this is why you can't keep it. And this is why we need to sell it. Um, right. Requires like a lot more delicacy than just like, oh no, you can't have it because you might break it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Imagine having to do the work of parenting your child. <laughs> 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 One one dissenter in the group, Stephanie L, refusing to forgive makes you the asshole. What they did was an asshole thing, absolutely. 
However, it's not unforgivable and holding a grudge or resentment isn't going to change a single thing. You know, I'm going to I'm going to push back seriously really on this notion about I would be really upset that? about this. I would hold a grudge. <laughs> yeah, well, and I also one kind of insight I'm having uh, recently is like, you know, you can't change what someone believes, right? Like that's kind of incoherent. You can you can try, you can try to convince them, right? But you can't force anyone to believe anything. And I actually think forgiveness is the same way. You you can't really choose to forgive someone. You can try, but like really forgiveness is kind of a, it takes two to tango for. Well, a they need to do something. This is why, like, sometimes I just feel like apologizing isn't enough. Like to me, apologizing is not enough. They need to, like, have a make good on this. Yeah, apologizing isn't enough at all. Usually it's it can. Well, yeah, it's like if you keep wronging someone and hurting someone and then you say sorry after every time you do it, but you keep hurting them, it's sort of like, well, yeah, I guess you're forgiven, but like they are going to cut you out and you deserve it. Plus also, I kind of, I don't know, I from the what I saw of it, it kind of seems like this has happened pretty recently. So like even bringing in like the whole forgiveness discussion is probably, it's probably too yeah. early. Like, I mean, eventually down the road, I'm sure like, I don't know, she's like 22. I feel like by the time she's like, what, 25, 30, maybe this won't, be such a pain point for her but like it is right now and I, I guess if they don't do anything to repair that relationship or show that they have done better maybe it will continue to be a problem but like I don't know forgiveness for forgiveness sake is kind of pointless because if they keep doing it again then you're going to just have this thing that's just sitting in the background that you quote unquote forgave them for but like didn't really because it'll come mm-hmm. back up again yeah well I guess see I would not call that forgive because to me forgiveness is you know, something a little deeper. There is letting go. I believe you can choose to let go, right? Like somebody wrongs you in a minor way or whatever, maybe a major way, and you go, uh, you know, this. they did this because they have trauma or whatever. You give them some reason and you let it go. You're not going to bring them to court. But I don't think that's the same as forgiving them at all. I think forgiveness requires an apology, requires mutual understanding. So I don't think OP is actually in a position to forgive. She's in a position to let go. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good distinction, actually. Honestly, you got me like literally looking up the definition of forgiveness because I'm like, what does it even mean? And I'm just getting synonyms like the act of forgiving. I'm like, okay, thanks a lot, dictionary.com. Sometimes, sometimes the dictionary doesn't have all the yeah. answers, you know, sometimes you got to you gotta just chew on it. Nonetheless, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I just feel, I, I've heard of so many people being like, "Oh, but I forgive this person because like it just gives them peace, even if the person has apologized." So I guess it, like it's just kind of this nebulous thing that just means what you want it to. But I think you make a really good distinction though that letting go and forgiveness can be different. Yeah, that's how I would split it up. Nonetheless, I I guess I think we all agree. A I T A for refusing to forgive my parents over something they lied about. Over 10 years ago, to me, I think what OP is actually saying is AITA for never forgiving, because I I think that's kind of what what has happened here and where this has landed, right? There's no apology from the parents. And I say, absolutely not. I say not the asshole and the parents are, whether she's never forgiving or she's just not forgiving now. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, she has a right to try to never forgive. Same. Yeah. That's what she wants. I think yeah. the statutes of limitation, she should get at least as long as she was lied to to not forgive. <laughs> nice. Which is a, quite a stretch. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ellie, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for making us an international podcast Yay! with your Canadian support. And uh, hey. stay safe during COVID. Yeah, you guys uh, stay safe too. And thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Our pleasure. <laughs>